London Sinfonietta are a group of musicians who love performing new music and in fact often invite and commission composers from all over the world to write brand new pieces for them to perform. A composer of course is the person that creates or invents or imagines the music out of nothing and it's our firm belief at the Sinfonietta that anyone can compose and this Postcard Pieces project invites you to have a go. Musical notation the way music's written down on the page is a system of writing music that's developed over hundreds of years. Many composers use this special musical language to communicate their ideas to the musicians who are going to perform their music. However, it's not the only system. Some composers like to notate their ideas using shapes or squiggles or colours or pictures or even words to get their ideas across. This system's called graphic notation. And we want everybody to have a go at composing some music using graphic notation. It's brilliant, really, because there are no rules, so you can't go wrong. About 50 years ago, a composer called James Tenney wrote a series of pieces for his friends to play. He wrote them on the backs of postcards and used written instructions and lines and shapes and even fragments of other music. Some of them are almost like pictures while others look more like scientific graphs. We want you to have a go at composing your own postcard piece, just like James Tenney did. And to give you a start, I thought I'd talk to two composers who work with the London Simonietta and who use graphic notation in their music, Deborah Pritchard and first, Samantha Fernando. Hi, Samantha. What's, um, what's really good for a composer in using graphic notation compared to traditional notation? Um, I think the best thing is that it's so free and open um, you don't really have to, you can create one without any knowledge of musical notation um, and it's it's actually quite fun it's quite playful because um, you really can you really can do anything with it it's there's no right answer. Do you just use graphic notation in your graphic scores or do you put in a little bit of musical notation too? Um, I, I do it in different ways. Sometimes I don't put any musical notation in at all. Um, the one that um, I've attempted um, for this, I have put a little fragment in. Um, it can be useful if you know how to do that kind of thing, to put a little bit in because it gives the players a starting point, something to think about, um, but it isn't necessary. Deborah, you've just uh, composed a piece for the London Symphonietta using graphic notation. Tell us uh, what, what, in your opinion, is great about graphic notation. Graphic notation is a wonderful way to work because it allows you to be much more free than usual. And it also hands over a lot of opportunity um, to the performer as well. And that's quite exciting for a composer because usually we're in complete control. Um, we're being very specific about notation, um, dynamics, register, all that kind of thing. So it's interesting for me, um, creatively, to see what happens when I sow the seed of the graphic notation and what happens after that. Brilliant. What, what kind of things do you use in your graphic notation? Well, it might be the best idea to actually hold up the one that I've done for you right now. Um, so this is the one that I created wow. and it's a colour circle. And there you can see I decided to choose very specific colours, um, because I feel that different colours have different kinds of characteristics. Um, but then in addition to that, different textures, um, different senses of intensity and velocity, perhaps in a rhythmic sense, um, how does it accumulate? And then in terms of how does it transform? And hopefully you can see in this circle that in many ways the performer can make a lot of these decisions themselves, where they start, um, how they interpret it, um, if it all leads through as one piece or whether it's more separate. Um, and I just love the idea of creating something that would give the performer that kind of freedom. So, are you ready to have a go at your own postcard piece? You can do it on your own or with somebody else. You can use whatever you want, paint, pens, pencils, crayons. You can even make a collage if you like. Whatever it is that conveys your musical idea. Thank you. When you finish your piece, do send it in to us at the London Sinfonietta. We're going to put on a special concert next Friday where we play a selection of these postcard pieces. 
If you or anybody else in your household plays a musical instrument, maybe have a go at playing it yourself and record that and send it in too. Talking of which, how does a musician go about playing from a graphic score? Well, I talked to two of our musicians in the London Sinfonietta, Byron Fulcher, our principal trombone, and Cleona Shanahan, the pianist. Great, so hi Byron, hi Cleona, good to see you both. Um, Byron, what's really great about reading music from a graphic score? I think you're not constrained by the notes that the composer have written. You can play to your feelings and it's not so exact what, what you have to perform. So you can, you can go as high as you want to go or as low as you want to go, but you don't have to play a bit higher than you feel comfortable with. Yes, you can, you can make it up and uh, be more creative. You have, you, you're not dictated to exactly what you have to produce. Cleona, when you get a graphic score, is it something you can play straight away or do you have to kind of think about it a bit and rehearse it a bit and try different options? It's always fun to try different options because actually with the graphic score, um, it's really exciting because it has color maybe and it has shape and it has texture. So there are lots of things to play with. So Byron, I think you've been sent over only a few hours ago, Deborah's new piece. Um, could you just play a little, or explain which bit you're going to play and then play a tiny extract of how you think that should sound? Well, I could play uh, just a little bit of the five elements to this thing. Okay. <laughs> five elements really clearly. Byron, were you singing and playing at the same time at one point? Yes, there's one towards the bottom of the picture, there's the, the red half circles, fairly abstract stuff. So I went a bit uh, alternative and extended around there with a bit of multiphonics, yeah. That sounded fantastic. Thank you so much. And Cleona, you have um, been given Samantha's piece. Yes. I think, which actually has some musical notation in it, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So, so can we hear a little bit of what, what you thought that piece might sound like? Yes. That was beautiful, Cleo, and thank you. Using the full range of the piano there from the very highest to the very lowest notes. So you started with the notes that Samantha's given us, I think. Yes, Is that right? That's but then right. How, how, what were you doing after that when you went to the extremes of the keyboard? Yeah, well, there's, there's two sort of quite bold colours in her piece, in the top left and the bottom right. And so I was inspired by that, um, and I wanted the extremity of range there. So I used the top of the piano for the yellow and the lowest range for the, 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 the most concentrated blue. 
And then what I thought about this piece is that really the middle of the postcard is where the focus is. So when I played her pitches again, I played them from the outside in and I finished on the middle note and the middle colour. So now it's your turn. Can you compose your own postcard piece? You can create something really colourful or just write down a few words. When you've composed it, send it to us at London Sinfonietta and maybe one of our instrumentalists will play it at our concert next Friday. Full details are following. Happy composing, everybody.